स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया that is the example another famous example of the brachistochrone and the problem of brachistochrone was introduced by the younger of the bernoulli brothers johann bernoulli johann bernoulli in 16 in 1696 in fact there was a competition between the two brothers as to who will solve each other's problem so when jacob introduced his problem of catenary johan came up with the problem of brachistochrone so there was a rivalry among these two brothers so the problem says the prob the problem says that we have to find the shape we have to find the shape of a wire along which a bead which is initially a bead which is initially at rest slides from one end to the other a bead initially at rest slides from one end to the other as quickly as possible under the influence under the influence of gravity under the influence of gravity in short this particular problem of brachistochrone was also termed as the optimal slippery slope problem the optimal slippery slope problem or optimal slippery dip now there is there are few assumptions in this problem again we assume that the curve is such that we have fixed end points so these are the assumptions in the problem fixed end points and further we assume that the motion is such that it is frictionless that is we do not out of all the forces friction doesn't contribute to the the motion of the particle further we assume that whatever we are trying to optimize or whatever solution we are trying to find the solution is continuous and piece wise piece wise differentiable right okay now in fact in fact so popular was this problem just a, ma a matter of trivia so popular was this problem that it was in fact introduced in a famous hollywood problem that is in spider man 3 where it was said by the hero peter parker that did bernoulli he said that did bernoulli sleep did bernoulli sleep before he found the curves of quickest descent okay so in this case peter parker was referring to the problem of the brachistochrone which we are going to talk about in depth over the course of our lecture so then the early solutions just a little bit more trivia the early solutions the early solutions to this problem was given by leibniz huygens and 
Newton himself, Isaac Newton, right? And then it was Euler who provided the most general framework of the the, the class of brachistochrones problems. So Euler provided the the generalized solution to this class of problems, and finally it was Huygens. It was Huygens who discovered that that the motion of the problem in brachistochrone is initial condition independent. Let me denote initial condition by I dot C. So, the motion is initial condition independent. Okay. Also known as the isochrone, the so called isochrone problems. So, just just a bit of setup in this problem, we see that in this case again example 3 continued, we see that in this case that the quantity that we are trying to the quantity that we are trying to optimize or minimize is the total time in which the particle slides to the bottom of the curve. So, we are trying to optimize the following integral which is the total length of the curve divided by the velocity of the curve which is a function of the arc length itself and the total integral of the total length is from 0 to L and we want to minimize this this particular functional. So, again L here is the length. So, let me let me draw a very basic figure to this problem. So, we have let us say we have a curve and the starting point of the curve is x 0 y 0 and we have a bead which slides along this curve to come to rest at the ground level. So, let us say the total the total length of this this curve is L and S is the arc length of this curve and v is the velocity the vil the velocity of the bead and bead at s units s units down the curve velocity of the bead at s units down the curve Okay. So, we are not going to provide the solution at this stage, but we will look at in more depth, we will look at the solution at a later stage. Further, uh, let me just give a bit of uh, slightly a bit more setup of this problem. Now, we, we know that again in this problem, we know that L is an unknown of the problem. We do not know that the total length of the curve. So, to, to find this velocity to be substituted in, in this integral, we utilize the conservation of energy, right. So, the energy conservation uh, argument states that the total energy of this system, in this case the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy is a constant of the problem. Let me denote it by C and let us say this is equal to the value of this energy at uh, the value of the energy at the initial point. Right? So, from this argument from this statement I can directly find what is the value of this velocity v of x turns out to be this is equal to taking the right hand side equal to c. We see that this particular expression comes out to be 2 c by m minus 2 g y of x. Okay. So, let me let me denote this expression by by 2 and we see that 
uh, well let me denote this by 3 and this particular expression by 2. So, so from, from 2 and 3 we see that that my, my time functional is as follows. So, my t of y is integral from x 0 to x 1 times the integrand is the arc length which is 1 plus y prime square d x divided by square root 2 c by m minus 2 g y of x. Now, this particular integrand is quite complicated. So, we do a little bit of simplification. We substitute, we substitute the following variable. Let us assume that the variable w of x is the following quantity 1 by 2 g times 2 c by m minus 2 g y right. So, when, when we write this let me call this as as 3 prime we rewrite 3 prime in terms of this variable w of x and when we do that when we do that we get the following functional integral from x 0 to x 1 1 plus square root of 1 plus w prime square divided by square root of w dx. So, this is the quantity that we are trying to minimize. Of course, we have we have the boundary conditions which are given by y of x naught is y naught and y at x 1 is y 1 right. We see that let me call this as 3 double prime. We see that 3 double prime uh, well I am going to right away reveal the solution to this problem although we are going to give a detailed step by step solution later on. So, so 3 prime has a solution has a minimal solution which is a cycloid right. So, I am going to give a parametric representation of this cycloid which is as follows 2 phi minus sin phi comma 2 1 minus cos phi right. So, cycloid ok. Why the name cycloid? If we try to track the motion the locus of these points on the x y plane we see that the points are such that the locus is such that they are they are located at the rim of a bicycle wheel and hence the name cycloid ok. So, so, so let us move on to another example in our case study. The, the third example that I have in mind is, is the DDoS isoperimetric problem. The DDoS isoperimetric problem. Okay. So, so, a little bit of trivia here. So, it turns out that Dido was an ancient Egyptian queen in the early 300 BC and she was thrown away from her empire by her wicked brother and in it turns out that she came to another land known as Carthage and in that land the, the landlord gave this oust queen a piece of rope known as the bull's hide and asked the queen to figure out a, an area using this rope which will be her empire initial uh, area of land which will be her empire. Now, it turned out that this queen was very intelligent she figured out that the, the rope has to be organized in such a way that it swipes the area of the circle and hence known as the DDoS isoperimetric problem. So, it turns out so the problem is as follows the problem is what is what is the shape what is the shape of the curve 
which encompasses that encompasses the largest the largest area given given fixed fixed length of the curve okay so so in in terms of the diagram let us say that we are given a curve and we have to figure out the shape of this the shape of this curve such that it encompasses the area swiped which is the largest among all possible areas so it turned out that the earliest proof was given at the time of dido herself by a greek scientist by the name of zenderus in 200 bc however the proof was very sketchy the the first version of the correct proof was given by weierstrass himself the first version was given by weierstrass himself about 2000 years later okay it turned out that steiner a german mathematician who was a contemporary of weierstrass also gave more proofs using contemporary of weierstrass also gave more proofs using the standard geometry arguments in fact he gave five more proofs five more proofs by geometry consideration okay now so so just to uh, just to give a quick overview in this particular case we want to maximize we want to maximize the area we want to maximize the area a of y which is the integral from x0 to x1 y of x dx such that such that the total the total length such that the total length in this case it is in in the diagram it is l by 2 the total length which is of course the integral of this arc length 1 plus y prime square dx is fixed so this is certainly a case of isoperimetric problem and further we assume we assume that the solution y is continuous and piece wise piece wise differentiable continuous and piece wise differentiable so well the problem is in this case my x0 and x1 are unknowns my x0 and x1 are unknowns so let me let me call this particular functional and denoted by by 4 so in this case my 4 uh, let's go to the next page so in this case my 4 will be represented using the arc length variable using s by noting the fact that ds square is dx square plus dy square or or i have that dx is from this simple manipulation dx is 1 plus sorry 1 minus dy by ds square times ds so dx is 1 minus dy by ds square times ds so so my functional area my area functional a of y in this case now again let me redraw the figure that i had in the previous slide 
Okay. So, this is my, my area which is half of the total area that we are trying to optimize. So, my area is half the total integral of over the total length here in this case the total length here is again L by 2 of y of s. So, I am I am representing this functional in terms of the arc length y of s times d x, where d x is 1 minus y prime square d s. Okay. So, so this is the, the functional that we need to optimize. Of course, d do gave the solution to this optimal, the optimal solution to this functional and the optimal solution intuitively comes out to be a semicircle. Okay. 